This is Kariuki Kiragu, Architect and Founding Director, Yumbani Village. African families decimated by HIV AIDS pandemic left many orphans under the care of poor rural grandparents amid high death rates. The self-sustaining Yumbani village on a thousand acres was conceived as a replicable pilot project to form, resettle and stabilize these families in groups of a thousand orphans and 125 bereaved elders. After resettlement, mortality rates fell from 15% to 0.4 with children now well nurtured and educated in strong foster families. Located at Mikuyuni, Kwavonza in Kitui County, 160 kilometers southeast of Nairobi, Village planning, design, and stage construction began in 2004 on a 560 million shilling budget, of which about 250 million shillings has been expended. The first family settled in 2005, and running costs are around 60 million shillings annually. The four facility types are 100 homesteads, amenities, utilities, and sustainability elements with clusters and neighborhoods around culturally significant foci. Apart from the homesteads, the design brings out 18 components, including health center, primary and secondary school, mukau plantation, greenhouses, agroforestry, food and fodder farms, workshops and industries, sand dam, pump house and water reservoirs, administration offices, social home and police post, eco-sanitation and dairy zero grazing unit, convent staff and guest housing. On 90 of the 1,000 acres, the village currently comprises four neighborhoods, each of eight clusters with four homesteads per cluster. An elder that nurtures ten children in a contemporary traditional setting with four homesteads clustered around a water point, which, with its gallery, laundry, and wastewater irrigation function, blends the four families into an extended family of 50. Each homestead covers a four-bedroom house on a half-acre permacultural shamba for vegetables, legumes, grains, fruits, herbs, rabbits, dairy goods, and poultry. Supportive social amenities are the two-stream primary and secondary school, health center, 700 audience social hall, with a 500-seater open-air theater adjunct. Provided to are a convent, guest and staff housing for 40, police posts, and monuments. The social hall, 20-car grazing unit and processing plant each cost less than 6 million shillings, while a police post with report desk, offices, board for three officers and six inmates costs about 1.5 million shillings. Niva Singhi, then 24, and her construction group built the 16-meter-high ISSB and steel structure gateway. This excellent instructor role model and mentor had no prior construction experience and later went on to construct a 30-meter sand dam in many village homesteads. The warm earthy interiors enriched by crafted timber furniture and fittings along with indigenous woven spun and dyed fabrics lend an ambience of intimacy and serenity. The 12 meter high 500 foot square meter hall was built in staggered ISSB walling with two intervening tie beams and a steel space frame roof structure. Roof cover was custom GCI sheets with waste clay tiles floor finish on cement creed. The four main utilities are the eco-sanitation center which processes human manure into plant fertilizer, seven sand dams supplying domestic farming and industrial water needs subsidized by four shallow wells and two salty boreholes. ISSB water holding tanks and storage reservoirs of 50 and 350 cubic meters respectively. Solar power to be used in street lights, pumps, general electrical power applications. Water is pumped from the sand dam wells via three holding tanks into two high point reservoirs whence it flows to homesteads, farming, industrial and other needs. The little waste water is directed to seedling basins. Sand dams are barriers dug into banks and bed to stop water flow in the apparently dry stream, backing water up inside the sand upstream. Every rainy season, the sand accumulates and the dam height, hence water storage capacity, is increased. Extraction is by bankside shallow well and with the ambient water table rising, tree planting without irrigation can be done at increasing distances away from the bank. Three well located sand dams doubling as bridges can provide water for 200 people, 150 trucks of building sand, permacultural alluvium, timber, food, employment and a regional river rejuvenation basis. 
The first five Mukao afforestation lots will be harvested in 2016 to yield 160 million shillings towards the payback on village capital and cumulative running costs. Current collective sustainability is through greenhouses, dairy cows, periphery shambles, produce processing and others, as homestead shambles provide food revenue, social and ecological stability. The 435-acre Arboreal Sustainability Program is in agroforestry, charcoal farming, mukawa forestation and orchard with spin-offs in seedlings, honey and jico lining sales. Wood carving and macrame bring current sustainability levels to about 30% and climbing. Of the 13 planned ISRI tabs containing facilities for training in and processing, packing, branding and marketing local products, three were built. Operational methodology followed the Borax manual with additional processes involving project brief formulation, holistic procurement policy, celebrations, local networking, community relations, training and community task groups creation, child selection criteria and family formation. Kiriani Primary School was vital in labor recruitment and furnishing the site office with two school desks. The initial land use plan was largely followed with the vital lesson that an acre in most of Kenya can yield 1 million shillings in raw produce annually. Applied to the periphery chambers, gardens on the village edge jointly worked by the villagers and neighborhood groups, a genial security and exchange membrane emerged as the children garnered foster relatives. Experience shows that social enterprise success is determined by inclusivity, responsibility, communality, long-term objectives and ownership. This can only be imparted by ideological training and all project participants from the sponsor, financier to laborer must attend. After site clearing, the labor force of about 400 people was trained in more than 15 materials. This included building, road, water reservoir and sand dam construction, permaculture and conservatory agroforestry, soil, steel, timber and concrete elements prefabrication, bulk materials supply. Every achievement celebrated strengthened the social spiritual resources to maintain ideological objectives and attaining project success. As mildly interested draft animals, the only transport mode that appreciates with age, fuel themselves nearby. Skills were built up through supervised peer training with gratifying results as partnerships in agriculture, livestock, fundraising, technical services and other fields underpinned optimum resource use, slash risk and depersonalized the project. The village population has stabilized at 1,000 children, 100 elders and about 50 health and social workers, teachers, administrators and others. Nurtured and educated, 45 children have gone out into the world while some artisans are engaged nationwide and in neighboring countries. The pragmatic objectives were affordable and durable infrastructure, sustainability and neighborhood goodwill. All these were provided through ecological applications most visible in appropriate building materials and technology. Applied ISSB walling costs about 60% of Jujak quarry stone, is twice as strong and promotes human health, while FCR tiles cost under 50% of GCI. Both have 70-year lifespans, stabilize internal temperatures, and meet quadruple bottom line requirements. Ascent to the spiritual realm is gained through the pervasive human touch, ecological awareness, imbued ownership, and the wired sense of mission, as desirable social progress is made via import substitution, better wages, popular mindset, indigenous industrialization. Greater efficiency, less monetary expenditure, multipliers, spin-offs, and lowered local prices bolster local economies, while environmental gains are made through lower pollution, recycling, and multi-level carbon locks. Blending infrastructure and agro-sustainability programs reinforces these advantages, in addition to which are mental and physical development scope expansion, internalization, knowledge quest and use, informed wealth creation, transdisciplinary collaboration. This made the village a laboratory for testing eco-technological design and implementation, urban rural migration possibilities, dryland farming, 
ABMT peer training effectiveness, alliance formation, rural industrialization, and development drivers. A sustainability program generating 1,000% of project funding costs and expansion programs can fund other projects so that a mutually empowering horizontal relationship between the core project and local community materializes across locales, institutions, ages, gender, classes, and educational levels. Major challenges in village implementation were novelty, funding, clan opinions and time, required revised governance in dual management of seemingly mutually hostile issues. A possible immediate application is in urban slum attenuation aligned with urban rural migration based on a tree economy where 20 billion shilling fund sets up a 15-year domino covering Kenya in tune with Vision 2030. The Nubani village can raise gross monthly income to 300,000 shillings for 12,000 families on its 1,250 square kilometer hinterland and increased forest cover to 75%. Replication in every Kenyan county would add 18 million shillings to the economy. The fulfillment of this will need research and development on ecotechnological integration into tertiary education for sustainable, equitable African development, permacultural intercropping, ABMT holistic and transdisciplinary approaches, and the biome reservoir, among others. To move forward, Africa needs this research application in residential and other institutional development food, energy, and industrial programs, as well as influencing the educational trajectory to increase relevance, a secure future, and culturally controlled growth. This is crucial for Kenya given that of the annual sociocultural demand for 250,000 housing units, only 30,000 or 12 percent are supplied in a mortgage market operating at less than 1 percent of its potential. Thoughtful redirection and concerted action is required from all. The village was possible due to the late Father D'Agostino's vision and energy, the late Archbishop Boniface Lele's generosity, Sister Mary's resolve, the late Dr. Kinyanjui's vast knowledge, and the indulgence of my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Kiragu of Lene. This and coming work is dedicated to them, as well as to the many others who lent unstinting support. Many blessings to them, and thank you for listening.